Welcome to another episode of the Maryland Made Podcast. The Maryland Made Podcast provides timely, relevant, and practical information to help student athletes and alumni become leaders, develop professional competencies, and be conscientious advocates in both their local and global communities. I am Walt Pegues, the Big Ten Diversity Fellow in the Maryland Made Student Athlete Development Unit here in Maryland. And joining me today to, to kick off our Athlete to Alumni series this fall is a very, very special guest. She's a University of Maryland lacrosse legend. Uh, two-time national champion, first team All-American, first team All-Big Ten, uh, 2021 Intercollegiate Women Lacrosse Coaches Association National Defender of the Year. The list goes on and on. Uh, a 2021 graduate of University of Maryland, Lizzie Colson. First and foremost, Lizzie, how are you doing today? Good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm reading off all my my prime era accolades. <laughs> Thank you. This is going to be fun. No doubt. I'm, I'm very excited um, to kind of dive into the conversation uh, today. Um, like we were talking about a little bit before, like you're a recent uh, graduate of University of Maryland, but I think you were the perfect person to kind of kick off our athlete to alumni series. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to kind of get into this conversation. And our theme this year um, is before, between and beyond. So we're about to go before, between and beyond with Lizzie Colson. <laughs> Hope you all enjoy Woo! it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, and, you know, in the intro, you know, I, I kind of just set off your list of accomplishments and accolades at Maryland, which is a, a long list. Um, Would have probably, you know, could have spent 10 minutes, you know, just reading off that list. Uh, but, um, you know, we all know that's not kind of where the story began for you. Um, you had a, you know, a decorated high school career. Um, you're from Manchester, Maryland. But, you know, take us back a little bit about, you know, Manchester, Maryland, um, just kind of your upbringing. And how has that shaped your identity? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, Anybody who's grown up on the East Coast or Maryland specifically knows that lacrosse is just like you're bored with the stick and that's how it goes. Um, and so that's kind of how it was for me. My mom played in college. Um, my older two sisters played. I played and my younger siblings played as well. So I've always just grown up around lacrosse. Um, and I think I really fell in love with it when I was around like 12 or 13. I wanted to quit for a hot second there. I almost like took up gymnastics seriously at the time. I played soccer, lacrosse, gymnastics, um, all of the above. And I just like loved gymnastics, but you know, I was like, I'm, I'm done with lacrosse, I think for right now. And then I played one more indoor season and I was like, why? Like, I, I love this. I don't know why I just had like a moment of like, I don't want to do it anymore. But I think other than that, like it's the only time I can think of when I was, haven't like, you know, been fully invested in lacrosse. Um, and then, yeah, like you said, I went to Manchester Valley high school, which is a small public high school in Manchester. Um, but we were pretty good. Um, we were a really, really good program, a powerhouse back in the day. I honestly, I'm embarrassed to say, I don't really keep up with it now um, just because I've been so busy and I'm so far from home. Um, but yeah, back in the day, that was, it was the spot and it was so much fun. Um, and so that in high school, I played lacrosse, I ran track and I played soccer and I loved all three equally. If I could have done all three in college, I would have, that would have been ideal. Um, but yeah, that was that was high school Liz growing up. And, you know, we had a lot of fun. I got you. And growing up in Maryland, like you said, it's a huge, huge lacrosse town. You know, I'm from yeah. Philly, so it's not as big in Philly. It's coming on slowly, yeah. but surely. But like once I kind of got here uh, to Maryland, I was just like, all right, this is lacrosse country. Like this is this is <laughs> the place to be for lacrosse. But yeah. I mean, when did you know, like you were the 2016 USA Today <laughs> Player of the Year uh, in high school? So, I mean, I'm sure you were, you know, you were a star entering into high school but like when did you know that like that you had like a collegiate future and even you know we'll get to this a little bit later but you were even drafted professionally so like when did you know that like lacrosse was it like lacrosse was the sport yeah um I think it goes all the way back to when I was like I I don't want to do this anymore um I had a coach who was like stick with it for one more year I promise you'll see good returns from it and so I did stick with it for one more year and it wasn't until eighth grade that I joined a club team and so nowadays that's, that's pretty late to join a club team. If you're looking to play in college, I mean, it's not late, but it's late compared to like what people do. Um, but yeah, I think when I started that club team, I played for Skywalkers out of Baltimore um, in eighth grade, I started and I just like fell in love with it. And my coach went to Maryland. And so she told me all of her stories about, you know, playing at the next level and playing competitively. And I just kind of like always had that competitive edge. I didn't care if I was running around a track um, or if I was playing soccer or if I was playing lacrosse, I've always had that like, competitive grind. And so I just, I love that. And I love that lacrosse was super fast paced. And like I just said, really competitive, a lot of contact. I just loved it. Um, and I think so it was eighth grade when I decided I probably wanted to like pursue that instead of soccer. Um, but it was a tough decision because I did, I did really, really love soccer, but you just couldn't really do both. I gotcha. And you said your, your club, was it your club coach that went to UMD? 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty cool. She was, um, oh gosh, I think she was a 2013 graduate. Okay. She, she would kill me if I didn't know that. <laughs> She'd kill me, but I think she was a 2013 grad. Okay. That's, that's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, so great. yeah, just talking about that, like, I'm sure that, you know, was a big part of maybe yeah. you choosing to go to Maryland, but, you know, kind of talk about your college recruiting experience and like what ultimately led you to, to go to UMD. Yeah, the college recruiting process is something that I tell all, you know, the girls I coach now, like, do not take it for granted, do not rush through it, just appreciate every um, opportunity and option that comes your way, because it really is such a special time in your life, like, there's no other time, I tell them all the time, no other time when, like, colleges and people everywhere are going to be like, I want you, and I Mm -hmm. want you to come to my school, and I'll give you this, this, and this, or you can, you know, get this out of it, you there's just so many different avenues and routes to take. And I think that it's a process that can feel a little overwhelming. And sometimes people can get caught up in that, like stress of being recruited, but just like the biggest thing is just to enjoy every single second. And for me, that's exactly what I did. I was just loving what I was doing and whoever came my way and was interested and our goals kind of aligned. That's who I, you know, narrowed my search down. I think um, the biggest way, the best way to go about it is just to, you know, start a list and start D1, D2, D3. Don't rule anything out. Start a list of anywhere you could go in the country. Where would it be? And then as you start to get a little bit older, narrow that list down a little bit, cut it down to maybe four teams, be a little more realistic. Okay. In a perfect world, I'd go here. But, you know, as I'm getting a little older, I'm seeing that maybe these four align more with my playing styles. And then find schools that are going to align with like your morals and what you like outside of lacrosse. Um, Lacrosse is great. And it does take up a lot of your life. So you want to love what they have lacrosse wise, but also, you know, being a student athlete, there's school, there's social aspects. There's just so many other avenues. Um, So you really want to make sure that it's not only lacrosse that sparks your interest, but it's also, you know, all the parts that make up being a student athlete. So I think that for me was something that I really, really focused on. And I had a great support system. Like I said, my club coach played at Maryland. My high school coach was really involved. My parents had been through it with my two older sisters. So the support from everyone around me was great. And I just kind of, you know, I played, I worked hard and I like supported the people around me and um, was just really grateful for every opportunity that came my way. And I think that was the best way for me to go about um, finding the school that I did. I love that. It definitely is like just being organized at like kind of at a Mm -hmm. young age to kind of like understand like there's more to lacrosse like you love lacrosse and you know you're going to a school to compete at it but there's so much so much more to it and it's a place find a place that's comfortable for you so I definitely you know definitely understand that absolutely yeah and you know talking about that like I feel like you you had like you said you had a strong support system you had uh, older sisters who kind of had been through the process before Mm -hmm. um you know even your mom you said played lacrosse but what were some of your goals like entering uh like Maryland like were you like one of those freshmen like had no expectation or like were you like (laughs) I know like I know what I'm here to do uh athletically but also like uh personally and uh, academically as well it's like so embarrassing to say but I didn't really know much about lacrosse growing up like I played it because I loved it and it was something that I felt like I was excelling at but I didn't know like the history of Maryland or the history of like the like the rivalries that went on I just knew that this was something I wanted to pursue and that you know Maryland was you know, had won a couple championships and they had just lost in like the national championship. But I was honestly going into it so bad to say, and Kathy and them know now, but like, I was so blind and I was so like ignorant, but I feel like that was the best way for me personally. It's different for everyone. But for me, that was the best way for me to go about it because I got there and, you know, I, I did feel the pressure. We'll probably get into that. I definitely felt the pressure my freshman year. Um, but I went into it and I was just kind of like, all right, like all bets are off. I uh, have nothing to lose. I don't, know you know really what I'm getting myself into so there was no immediate pressure to perform um but I knew you know they were competing for national championships in the last few years and I knew that that was something that I wanted to reach my coach had told me about that she had won a national championship and that's just a goal that anyone that wants to play in college you're going to have that end goal like you hear national championship and your ears perk up and your eyes light up and it's just something that like that's everybody's end goal at the end of the day and so to be in a program that year after year competes for that um At the time, I didn't really realize how special that was, but, you know, now that I'm an alumni, um, (laughs) I can speak on how special that is. It's just, it's a, it's a really, really awesome thing to be a part of. And going into a freshman year, I was just excited and eager to hopefully make an impact. I think it didn't really matter where I went. I just wanted to make an impact and make an immediate impact. Um, And so we can kind of get into that too, like that immediate impact, wanting to make an impact kind of led to like a freshman, like funk. I don't know. Um, But yeah, wherever I went, I just wanted to make an impact and it just happened to be Maryland. That was so, so great. 
I got you. So you arrived to College Park um, and your freshman year, um, if I'm not mistaken, y'all win a national championship. Is that, is yeah. that correct? So, I mean, that's, yeah, a, that's, a, <laughs> so that's a great way. It's a great way for any kind of career to start. Yeah. Um, but um, you, you said you dealt with some some pressure and, and things like that. But um, yeah. just kind of like take us to that back to like freshman year, entering campus um, at University of Maryland. Like, how was that? How was that experience overall? It's incredible. Like it is so fun. It's the first time you're on your own and you're a college kid and it's so exciting and everything's so new. Um, I just fell in love with it. Like everyone around me was great. The cross was so much fun. Obviously we did a lot of great things that year athletically, but academically it was like interesting to figure out what I was interested in school and whatnot. Um, I started out actually as a nutrition and food science major. And so um, I came in thinking I wanted to be a nutritionist and obviously we'll talk about what I'm the goals are now, but um, just coming into school and having like basically like the world was my oyster like what do you want to study because you have at Maryland so many options and our coaches and our academic advisors were really awesome about just you know if you want to study this take a few electives here and if you think that this will interest you then take a class here and there they were just really open with us exploring our options and kind of getting our feet under us that freshman year if you didn't really come in having a definite idea of what you wanted to do and while I thought I did freshman year by the end of the fall I was like wait this isn't what I want to do mm -hmm. and it was really great at a school like Maryland to have that exposure to a ton of different majors I got you so what made you ultimately switch your major um to is it kinesiology and exercise science that you received your degree in so I got my degree in sociology okay sociology so awesome. I, yeah psychology sociology. Awesome. I want nice. to be a sports psychologist is the end goal but that takes a little nice. more schooling so two more years of school and that is the end goal um and I think that maybe later we can chat about how I actually got into that because that was, you know, I just kind of fell into, I just studied it because I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do. I knew I loved, you know, lacrosse and maybe coaching or something I could be good at, but I didn't see it long-term. Um, and it just so happened that I went with this major and it really worked out because by the time I was a junior, I figured out that that's exactly what I want to do. Um, and I couldn't really see myself doing anything other than sports psychology at this very moment. Like I'm super passionate about it. I'm really excited to get into that field. Um, but yeah, that did definitely take until junior year. And I think that that's a lot of times something people struggle with. And nowadays, especially like there's so much pressure to like know what you want to do right when you get into college, which is just not the case. Like there's mm -hmm. a lot of time to figure it out. Even, you know, when if you graduate and you still don't know what you want to do, that's totally fine too. I think that like just ever, it's kind of like goes back to the recruiting process. Everyone has their own way of going about it. You can't compare your journey with someone else's. Sometimes people know what school they want to go to. Sometimes people know their majors and sometimes they don't. And that's just how it goes. Um, and so, yeah, I think that there's like all different ways to get to what you want to do, all different ways to get to the school you want to be at. And, you know, mine's going to look very different than yours. That's great. Um, and there's so many, like you said, there's so many opportunities and so, so much to yeah. kind of get involved with. Um, and it's like a lot of, a lot of time for you to kind of make those mistakes at a, at a young age to kind of like just try yeah. something new and just kind of just go for it. So I definitely, definitely understand that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, speaking about the whether it be the pressure of being a student athlete or whether it just kind of just be the pressure of competing at that high level of, you know, competing for national championships daily. Um, but kind of what are some things that you um, specifically struggled with um, and how did you you know overcome it? Yeah, so freshman year, I actually was a midfielder, so you'd never know because by the senior year, I just definitely was not. Um, but freshman year, I came in as a midi in all of high school. I played midfield and um, I was really excited to come in and play midfield for a top program. And then, you know, all fall, beginning of the spring, I'm playing and I'm playing as a midi. And then I got in my own head, I got in my own way. And I just kind of started feeling like I should be doing everything all over the field. Just coming from a high school that that's kind of what was expected of me. And then getting to a college where that's just not how it goes. Um, I had a hard time adjusting and I kind of dug myself into this hole where I got on the, I was getting on the field and I was thinking I just needed to get the ground ball, get the turnover, get a draw control, then score a goal, then make a save. I'm not even going to go. I just had so many like unreasonable expectations and mm -hmm. they're so unrealistic um, that I got in my own way. And then it was probably like four or five games in. It was like a little four and five game span that I just didn't play at all. And Kathy was like, I know you have it, but like, I, you know, you're in your own way. Like you just need to figure it out. And so that was like the moment I really decided I was like, this is not how I want this journey to go. I just loved it so much. And, you know, there's important pieces to people who are on the sidelines there are, and we can like talk about that too. I think mm -hmm. that everyone's role is important, but for me and having that little taste of being on the field and being an impact player, like that's just not really where I saw myself. And so I worked super, super hard. And then come final four, my freshman year, um, a girl was injured 
And at this point I was, I was back to playing, you know, but I was like as a runner, um, playing a defensive runner. So a position again, I've never really played and come fr- uh, fall, no final four of freshman year. Um, a girl goes down, she gets hurt. And our coach is like, Liz, like you're going to play tomorrow and you're going to start. And I was like, I'm going to start where, like in the final four as a freshman, like that's just, you know, that's every girl's dream. And so I was super excited, but also nervous because it's a position, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm new to it. Um, there was just so many emotions that freshman year of just, you know, frustration of being in my own way, excitement of playing, excitement of learning from the best of the best around me. Um, just a flood of different emotions that year, but I wouldn't change it for anything. I learned so much about myself and who I want to be as a player and just how to overcome that adversity because um, I don't think a lot of those girls that play at Maryland or any girls at like a top level school struggle with playing time in high school and stuff like that. So when I got to college, that was something that I really had to overcome and work to um, like not think about and work to be like, I'm here for my teammates. I'm here for my friends, no matter what that looks like. And while at the time I did see something different for myself, I, that wasn't like the end goal. The end goal was to, again, win a national championship. And so if I was on the sidelines, so someone else was doing it better, like that was fine. Um, so I just learned, I learned a lot about myself freshman year. So I wouldn't change my journey at all, but that was the end of my mid, uh, midfield days. And that's kind of where I transitioned into a defender. I think it, that was a you know, blessing in disguise um, as you yeah. were <laughs> the best defender uh, in women's lacrosse uh, in your last year. So I think it definitely worked out and the position change was great for you. <laughs> it's funny because in club, my club coach was always like, I think you're going to be a defender in college. Like I just have always seen it. And then when I tried out for the U19 team when I was in high school, they were like, if you want to try out as a defender, I think this might go better for you. Uh, I got cut from the U19 team. They were like, you should try it as a defender. And I was like, no, I'm a midi. Like I want to play midfield. And now my mom and I always joke about it. I'm like, I was, I was supposed to be a defender. <laughs> like there I was at U19, there I was in club and everybody saw it. And I was just like, I really want to be a midi, I guess. I saw it is sometimes, but it, it all worked out. It. it all worked out. Yeah, yeah. Um, and speaking about that, like you were, when it comes to like being a student athlete, like you reached the peak, being a national champion, you reached the peak winning national awards and being an all American. Mm-hmm. But how did you balance being that student athlete, especially like a high profile or like a a, a star student athlete, but also mm-hmm. being a being a student and then also just kind of being you, being Lizzie. So how did you balance all of that? Yeah, it's definitely a lot. And you definitely get into a groove where it doesn't feel as much like work. But I just leaned a lot on the people around me. I leaned on my academic advisors for school a lot. You can ask Heather. I was in her office almost every day. Um, I leaned a lot on my family and my older sisters who had been through it before. um, And my friends, my older, you know, mentors and people who have also been through it before. Um, And then my coaches were just so awesome about, you know, you have practice, but here's our practice block. We will not go over if you have you know, school that's weighing on you, like, let's, let's figure it out. Let's get in a better routine for you. So I think it was my support system that really, really helped, but just mainly, mainly getting organized and getting organized early. I think I took a little bit more time in the fall to get organized than I probably should have. Um, I was a little overwhelmed. There was a lot of new things. And so that freshman fall was definitely a tough transition for me. But then once I figured it out by the spring, you know, I got organized and I was able to talk to people. I think one of the biggest things in terms of school that I learned was just like asking my professors and my teachers and stuff like that for help. Um, I was really nervous to do that when I first got there because at my high school, it was really tiny and I knew all my um, professors like personally. So I didn't feel as weird asking questions. All my classmates were friends, it was easy. And then I got to college, I'm sitting in like 200 people lectures and it was just so intimidating to ask questions. I didn't wanna go to office hours. I didn't really know how it worked. I didn't have time. Um, so talking to your professors and being okay with like being a little vulnerable with asking questions. Cause if you have a question, I'm sure everyone else has the question. And then, you know, scheduling those office hours on your own time. If it doesn't work with your schedule, it's, you, he, they get it. Like they get student athletes, you know, have a lot on their plate. So just being okay with asking questions, I think was the biggest thing that I had to learn um, in college. I got you. And I, that's a lot. Um, and the student yeah. athletes too have so much on your plate, um, especially yeah. playing at, at, a, at the division one level, playing at a, a national contender yearly at University of Maryland. So there is so much right. expectations to be mm-hmm. a star and, and be successful in the field, but also in a classroom, um, but also trying to, you know, build your own kind of brand. And it's kind of interesting. Um, I guess you are the, the last class that kind of didn't have the NIL, I know. Um, you know what I mean? <laughs> but this, I mean, this is a perfect kind of setup to this, like, 
You're yeah. also a podcast host, um, the lineup yeah. podcast. Um, kind of yeah. this kind of tell us when did that journey begin for you? And you were doing this while while you were a student. Is, yeah. that, is that correct? So yeah, so yeah. just kind of tell us, tell us about that story. Yeah. So I um from ACL two years ago, I think it now, I don't even know anymore. Um, two years ago, and I just struggled a lot with the mental health part of it. And I was just feeling really alone and really isolated. And this is something that you know most people some people deal with without injury, but I can relate a lot on the injured part of it. I just, you know, I didn't feel like myself and I put a lot of of my identity in sport without even realizing it. And then when I got hurt and I wasn't in practices and I wasn't involved in like what was going on, I just started to feel really isolated. I had eating problems. I was just not feeling like myself. I wasn't, you know, used to going for a run when I felt upset or bopping around or hanging out with friends, whatever it looked like. And my schedule just changed to PT every single day, missing practice, missing out on those memories, um, pain all the time, feeling like a burden from people getting me around from place to place. Long story short, I just felt all alone. And I put that all on myself. I, I didn't ask for help when I needed it. And I just started, I was a captain. So I was expected to feel like bubbly and that's just who I am as a person. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I went, as a captain, I wanted to be a leader and I wanted to be hands-on and I wanted to be there for my teammates. So I didn't really let them see how much I was struggling and kind of struggled in silence. Um, and then I, my coach kind of caught on, everyone kind of saw through my little act. And she was like, I think maybe you should start seeing a sports psychologist. And so long story short, I started seeing a sports psychologist changed everything for me. Um, that's how I found out I wanted to do that. And then fast forward a year later, I was like, I getting a lot of like DMs and responses over quarantine, just kind of like, Hey, I tore my ACL. I broke my arm. I'm doing this, this, and this. How can I asking a lot of different questions? And I was like, I said to my mom, I was like, I wish that I could just like tell these girls, like one, like give all these girls these answers that they want. And I don't know how to do it. I don't have time. Like I, there's, there's kind of a lot of questions. And so I was like, how could I like reach a big audience? And I was like, you know, I'll do a podcast. Like I was over quarantine. I was bored like anyone else. Like I was like, I have enough time right now. I'll totally start a podcast. I'll answer all these questions. I'll get people who have similar stories. People have like been through the ringer. And basically this podcast is just made to like amplify athlete stories that aren't like glamorous and like amplify like the gritty and the hard parts of being an athlete and the mental health part of being an athlete because you know everyone can see a physical injury everyone knows that they're they're there when you play sports they happen but a lot of people forget about the mental part of it and a lot of people forget that there is so much mentally that goes on with being an athlete or student athlete that is hidden a lot of the times so that's how I just was like how can I use my message and spread it and use my hurt to help other people And so that's what I did. I just kind of ran with this idea of the podcast and it was so great. I've been getting awesome, awesome feedback. I'm, I'm just having so much fun with it. Um, and yeah, I did that while I was a student at school. And like you said, I ran into issues with the name image and likeness, which would have been so helpful (laughs) back then. That would have been awesome. Um, so I was, I was pretty limited in what I could do and how I could promote it and, you know, the ads I could have on there. Um, but it was so much fun. I wouldn't change it for the world. Like I, I loved it. And I, it was just so fun. And it was cool because at Maryland, there are so many connections. Like, you know, you'll get to talk to mm-hmm. so many cool alumni who have just have awesome stories. Um, even like Scott Van Pelt, like he, like, that's just a great connection that, you know, having a podcast or any kind of platform being an athlete, like allows you to have. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's, that's powerful. Yeah. Like, you know, the work that you're doing in the podcast, like the stories that you're telling and, you know, just sharing your own story. That's so powerful. I mean, it's impactful to, to so many people out there. So, you know, definitely, you. Yep, no doubt. No, I'm definitely you know proud of you and, and keep keep going with that. Because <laughs> like you said, like people, people see all the, the glamour of being athletes. People, you know, yeah. see the the stands are, are filled with, with fans sharing people on. But um, the, the real stories and kind of getting beneath the beneath the helmet and beneath yeah. the uniform, like yeah. as a person, first and foremost. So uh, I, I definitely yeah. love that. And your podcast is yeah. is great. And it's, it's what we need out there. Yeah. And I think that was like the other biggest thing for me is like on surface level, everyone was like, how are you so positive through this ACL? How you haven't even shed a tear, like blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, like to them, I was like, oh yeah, you know, I'm good. I'm good. But then like behind closed doors or to people who I'm very close with, I was like, I'm not good. Like I am not good. And it took me a while to be able to say that to like other people who I knew, like looked up to me or whatever it was. Um, And then I just kind of decided like if they could see me for like actually me and for me like hurting and telling my story, then, you know, imagine what it would do for girls who are also hurting behind closed doors. And for whatever the reason might be, it's probably, maybe it's not ACL, maybe it's not injury. 
whatever the reason is, like letting them know that it's okay to like not, I hate the saying because I feel like it's so cliche. It's okay to not be okay. Mm-hmm. And that we can talk about these feelings and we can talk about these emotions. Like even though we are athletes and we're supposed to be like, so like tough, whatever. Um, it's totally okay to have these feelings and we should talk about them. So I think that that was the biggest thing. If people could see that I am okay talking about these things, then maybe, maybe they'll feel a little better talking about them too. No doubt. No doubt. And you talked about um, a little bit earlier that you always kind of, you know, you wanted to be a sports psychologist. Um, you talked about, you know, your coach recommended that maybe um, what you were going through um, recovering from your injury, that maybe it would be good for you to talk to a sports psychologist, but kind of when did this, um, you know, journey of you wanting to become a sports psychologist, like when did it all begin? Were you like a sophomore or a junior or like, did this happen after your injury or like at what uh, time period? at University of Maryland did did this kind of come across your plate? Yeah so I think it like started to come across my plate something some form of like a therapist or like like psychologist probably definitely before my injury I think probably like sometime junior year um but I was just like you know curious I was like okay like I'll do that because that's something like I think I could probably see myself doing and it's a good degree and like if I don't end up doing it I'll just like you know I'll figure something out and then it was after I told my ACL, I started seeing the sports psychologist in the fall, honestly, against my will. And I will say it, and she knows it. I was really hesitant to see a sports psychologist. I was just like, again, I'm not, I'm not hurting. I'm peppy. I'm happy. Everything's fine. Um, but I started to see one. I started to see Dr. Garvin, Dr. Michelle Garvin through the University of Maryland. I think that was in probably September, October. And it was just like the biggest breakthrough I've had in sport in general. It was a place where I could just completely be myself and completely tell her how I was feeling and break down. I didn't have to be peppy. I didn't have to be perky Liz, like the captain. I didn't have to, you know, just sound selfish, check on anyone else. Like I was just simply there to heal myself. And it wasn't even like the physical part of me. It was the mental part of me. And I just loved how like that was a safe spot. And I loved how she made me, you know, feel like I was getting better every time I walked out of that room, but it was, um, it was just such a growing and learning experience. And I, you know, as the months went on, I was like, that's what I want to do. I knew that I wanted to help people. I knew I wanted to work with people. I couldn't do a nine to five office job. Um, and I would love to be involved in sport, like if I could. So that was like my perfect situation. And then, so months later, after seeing sports psychology for months, months, I started having conversations with her, like, what would that look like to, you know, go into grad school for it. And it's just been, it's been awesome. I, I just couldn't see myself really doing anything else. I knew like, I just wanted to be that for someone. I want to be able to be that safe space for someone. I want to be able to talk through things that maybe they can't on their own. Um, I want people to leave there with goals and like to feel good about what they're doing. Um, So I think that for me, it was like the biggest turning point. And when I really figured out like, that's exactly what I want to do. So. That's great. Um, And you kind of, you just beginning to kind of talk about that, uh, like what it takes to become a sports psychologist. And Mm -hmm. uh, we were joking, like you're, you're an alum now, like you're, (laughs) you're, you're on that alumni side of things. Now it's, it's new, but you are there. So let's kind of, (laughs) so let's look at that. Like, let's, let's look at the beyond. And it's been uh, like a, a, almost four months uh, since you have been um, going from University of Maryland, but what have you been up to since and kind of what's uh what's on the horizon for for Lizzie yeah. Colson? <laughs> yeah, so I am actually living out in California, packed up and shipped across the country. Um, and I am currently working for a club team. I'm the program director of a club team out here. And then I'm also the events coordinator for Unleashed Women's Across. So if for all my like women's across players out there, they would probably know what that is. But if anyone needs um, an explanation, it's the PLL, it's the women's side of that that organizes camps, clinics, overnights, things like that um, through the professional or premier lacrosse league. So that's been awesome. And I'm loving what I'm doing. It's really, really great. I'm still training with us and still keeping a stick in my hand, definitely keeping that on the forefront. And then um, I was supposed to, (laughs) this is the ironic part, I was supposed to go to grad school this fall. And Uh I decided that I wanted to take a year to do this and explore my lacrosse options and kind of run with this like not name image and likeness thing, but essentially what, what opportunities are out there for me in lacrosse, because, you know, I'm an alumni of four months and these, you know, lacrosse opportunities won't always be there because I'm already washed up, but like I'll get more washed up soon. So (laughs) once these opportunities in lacrosse kind of start to um, slow down a little bit, I'm definitely going to go to school for sports psychology. And that's a two-year program, one year in the class and one year of practicing. So not too bad, pretty, pretty easy. I'll probably start that next fall. Okay. That's awesome. And yeah. still, still multitasking and got multiple. Always multitasking. Multiple, exactly. So it's, it's an athlete thing. 
So yeah, yeah so I know, it I follows know. you. It is. <laughs> Definitely. It is. <laughs> so what are some steps that, that you have taken to kind of get to this point? And like, you're all, you're out on the West coast now. Um, you, you're yeah. a Maryland kid, but like, what, what were some steps that kind of prepare you for, for that? Kind of like you said, you're shipping your bags and you're packing up, moving all the way across <laughs> the other side of the country. Um, so like what prepared you for that? Um, I think I've always just had it in my nature that I'm like a risk taker and that I am adventure seeking. And so I think like when this opportunity across the country presented itself, I was like, all right, sure. Like I'll figure out, you know, the logistics once it, once I take it. But I think, you know, just being in Maryland my whole life, I was ready for a change of pace. And I love Maryland. I'm sure I'll be back, but um, I was just ready for a change of pace. So that was a big piece of it. But I think throughout college, the pieces that kind of got me prepared for this mostly was just, again, it goes back to your support system and leaning on them and asking questions and reaching out to, like you said, alumni, so many alumni throughout the summer who I was like, Hey, what would you do in this situation? How do I go about this? Even with like lacrosse, like there's now, now that I'm, I mean, now they can do it in school, but now that I'm graduated, there's sponsorships and there's all these different like avenues that you can take professionally. There's just different routes that I didn't, I wasn't exposed to in school. And that's something that, you know, these college kids are getting exposed to early, which is going to benefit them so much when they get out of school. Cause I got out and I was like, Oh gosh, now what? Like, no, mm-hmm. I, I couldn't even have these conversations before. Um, but that's where the alumni came in and were so incredible and gave me so much advice about like all of that, what they think like they would, if they were me, like how they would probably go about the situation and just really just like honing in on that alumni and that support piece of the coaches, uh, my friends, my family, and then just being like, you know, I think that this comes in my nature of being an athlete, just being okay, taking those risks and like being okay to fail. Like if I got out here and it went horribly, like, all right, we failed. Like, where can we go from here? Like, how can I move up from here? Um, and just, and just think that that's a big piece of being an athlete and, you know, all of the most competitive athletes, like they're not afraid to fail. And so I think that that is in my nature, as long as a lot of like anyone at Maryland listening to this, it's, it's in their nature as well. Um, you wouldn't be there if it wasn't. So I think that, that was the biggest piece. For sure. I mean, that's great advice for, for every, you know, student athlete, especially at the University of Maryland. Um, and I love that you are, you know, still, like you said, you still have a stick in your hand. You are still, yeah. you know, pursuing and, and living out your dream. And, and I love that. But you're also um, you're also working with, with a club team. You're also, you know, doing so much. Um, and my question for you is we'll have a lot of student athletes that have, you know, aspirations to play professionally um, in any sport that they're competing in. Uh, but how do you maintain that work life balance, but also like, again, maintaining who you are um, mm-hmm. and pursuing your career goals as well. Yeah, it's a lot of self-discipline. Like even today, it's waking up early, getting to work out in, you know, getting your work done. And I think it all comes back to being at Maryland and them kind of giving me my schedule and not even giving me an option. It was like, all right, well, at nine o'clock, we have lift and we have practice. Then we have a uh, film. Then you have class and you have to eat dinner and then you have to do your homework. Like that's just how it was. You didn't ask questions. And so you get in that routine And I think after school, it falls on you. It's a lot more self-discipline, but I think just knowing that playing, you know, training with us, knowing what those girls are doing and how much work they're putting into it. And a lot of times, like knowing my friends back home, like they're working hard, like just knowing that the people around me are working hard makes me want to work hard. It makes me stick to a routine. It makes me like, okay, like I can get out and I can go do something today. So I think that just over the years, that structure and that routine and having that support system around me that was also doing the same things, even on days when like that, like the last thing we wanted to do was go to the gym and lift. Like some days it's just miserable. Like people know athletes get it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it was just like having this people around me that you knew were doing the same thing that doesn't change. And now it just looks like, you know, group fitness classes or, um, gym sessions with other people, but it's just knowing that those people around you are doing the same thing, whether it's an easy day or a hard day, and then getting in a routine of, all right, after I've gotten my workout in for the day, how much work can I get done in this span of hours? And then also like saving time for me. So you ask like, how do I keep like that Lizzie, like self, it's just also a lot of me time. And that's something that I learned through my ACL journey. And I talk a lot about my podcast. It's just, I, I didn't really take that time for me growing up. And I didn't, I, you know, it was always like school sports, like friends, like how is everyone else doing or everyone else good. But now it's sometimes like, I just need a day for me and that's totally fine. Um, so I think just incorporating that at the end of the day, whether it's writing, reading, um, going for a walk, whatever that looks like, just incorporating that me time to kind of reset, refocus, and then get like excited for the next day, not making it feel like a job, but like finding what I'm excited about for the next day. And then just like diving in. 
I love that. I love that. It's so that's so important. You know, that self care, making sure that you that you're okay. Like you have to make sure that you're okay, or you're not going to be able to give your time. You're not going to be able to give your energy to yeah. to anyone else or anything yeah. else. So it's definitely and that's so important. Yeah, that's so true. So true. Yeah. And I, I'm I'm hoping that a lot of people learn that sooner than I did. Like I was like literally a junior in college before I realized that like self care is actually very important. Um, so I'm hoping like you're doing like the stuff you're doing, the podcast I'm doing. Um, there's so many avenues now that like teach us self-care and it's such a big thing in sport. I think right now that it's encouraging to see because it is so important. Is there, is there, you, that's a great point. Um, is there anything else that you would say that you wish you were, uh, I guess, more prepared for as a, as a student athlete? Um, that's a tough one. I feel like I had so many people like really, I think the biggest thing that I wish I knew, and this goes back to freshman year when I kind of got in my own head is that like, it's okay to be like competitive and it's okay to show up as a freshman and be like, Hey, I, I want to play too. And like, at the end of the day, again, you're all working towards the same goal, but I was just so afraid to like step on anyone's toes, but I knew in my heart, the hard work I put into it. And I was getting in my own way. I know on my podcast, someone said like the best piece of advice they've ever been given is like, the only person that says that you can't is you and like the person you're left and right, they believe in you, especially at the college level, whatever sport you're playing, like they want you to succeed. They want you to do great things. You're on their team. Like, of course they do. You play for their school. Of course they do. So I think that for me, freshman year, like I was in my own way and I wish I just knew how much people around me, like were supporting me as well. And how much I was like, all right, I put in this hard work. Like I've, I've got myself like to this point, people around me have gotten to me to this point. Um, we've all done this. Now it's just like, relax and play. Now it's like, okay, like we're here. Let's just play kind of thing. Um, and I think that that's probably something that I didn't really think too much about just coming from a small school again, having to like, not really think about that kind of stuff. Um, but everyone there is, you know, there to support you and there to see you do great things. So just believing in that and believing that you've done the work that it takes to get where you are and then just keep working, just keep doing your thing, having that confidence that you need to like you know step on that field for sure oh, that's great um and it kind of close out in terms of like beyond right i don't want to i don't want to rush things i don't want to like look too far ahead as <laughs> i know don't let me think about as that you're, as you're as you're a newly <laughs> you know <laughs> graduate but like let's look at maybe like i'll just go with five years down the line right so like what would you say is like okay you know i i'm on the right path to success like what would that look like for you yeah, I think definitely having my degree. I think that that's like the most important thing for me is getting that degree. And I think that, you know, practicing whatever that looks like and wherever that looks like, obviously I'm open to live wherever life mm -hmm. takes me. So I'm not sure exactly where I'll be, but I could definitely say I'll be involved in lacrosse probably through like a club or, you know, maybe a little bit more competitive than club, whether it's playing at the professional league or I'll definitely just still be involved in lacrosse. Um, but I think five years from now, I'll probably be practicing sports psychology um, hopefully at the collegiate level. Um, but we'll see. I mean, I know that sports psychologists are needed at every single level and I don't think one is more important than the other. I just think that like my story specifically was from the college level. And so I really resonate with college athletes. And so that would be perfect in a perfect world. I'd be living somewhere awesome, you know, doing what I love lacrosse wise, but also doing what I love, um, in my career. That's great. Um, you're, you're well on your way. I believe so. Um, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. So it's great. Um, and one last, question before I let you plug your podcast and all of your info but what was your <laughs> like you you were a two-time national champion all-american um and so many accolades and awards but what was that one accomplishment or just maybe one experience at University of Maryland that was your favorite yeah um I think it was junior year national championship I think because we were in my home state so many of my friends were there like it was in my backyard essentially in Maryland like 30 minutes away um it was just, we had such a special team that year and freshman year was incredible. Don't get me wrong, but you don't know any different. You show up and mm. win the national championship. Like, oh, this is easy. Like, why, why don't we do this every year? But then like come like sophomore year, we had a lot of, like we were in, the, we lost in the semis. Um, and so we knew junior year, like going into, we were like, this is like this, our year kind of thing. Like, let's, let's really get after it. And then to see all that hard work pay off and to see like that heartbreak the year before, just be like, revived and like you just like felt so like it was just incredible and like to do it in our backyard was even better and with the people around me there's like there is just no better feeling so I think like the pe when people ask me what moment was like specific like the best like I'm, I'm gonna have to say junior year national championship I gotcha that's great I mean it's no better no better homecoming for you to, to win a yeah. national championship so that's yeah, that's yeah, awesome yeah. it was great 
That's awesome. And Lizzie, I just want to say thank you again for your time uh, and joining the Maryland Made podcast. Um, shout out to Tim who recommended you. Um, yeah, definitely. Tim. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely enjoy this conversation. And I, I'm sure it will definitely impact uh, a lot of our student athletes at Maryland and just like our supporters of, of the podcast and of um, the Maryland Made program as well. So thank you for your time. But yeah, you have your own podcast um, <laughs> and you're thriving in life as well. So please tell people <laughs> where they can find you on social media, but also where they can find your podcast. Yeah, so social media will be, I think it's Lizzie Colson. I think that's all it is, Lizzie underscore Colson, maybe. I do not have a TikTok. I refuse, <laughs> I will not get TikTok. Um, but uh, Instagram is that. And then my podcast is the lineup podcast with Lizzie Colson. It's on Spotify, Google, it's on Apple Music. It's pretty much anywhere you can find a podcast. Um, we took a little break, but we are going to be back in the next week. So that's exciting. And then, yeah, so that's, those are my things. I have L. Colson Lacrosse on Instagram as well. So follow that because we sell a lot of stuff and we do a lot of clinics and camps and stuff like that. So L. Colson Lacrosse and Lizzie Colson. That's it. All right. Go check it out. Go check up the lineup podcast. Go download and subscribe to that. And Lizzie, again, yes. thank you very, very much for, for being yeah. on the Maryland Made Podcast. And yeah, of course. All of our listeners out there, continue to stick with us on the Maryland Made Podcast. We'll be dropping episodes every Monday. Um, you, we'll have great alumni guests like Lizzie Colson. Um, and I'll be dropping every Monday. So, um, and of course, you can find us on everywhere on social media as well as linkedin at md made terps and we do have a tiktok coming soon though <laughs> as so you should. As i'll put you that should. out there because we got we got to get with signs but yeah stay tuned in the maryland made podcast again we appreciate y'all for listening that was lizzie colson before between and beyond and until next time thank you thank you so much no problem